Good evening, my brothers and sisters. We greet you once again with the joy of the Lord. I was glad when they truly said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And as we approach you this evening, it goes back to what we dealt with in 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show thyself approved a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we come tonight to impart a word unto you coming out of a man the book of nehemiah chapter 2 verses 11 through that of 20 tonight as we talk about the restoring builder but before we get into our lesson let us continue to pray for our sick and our shut-in and all of those who are going through a time of bereavement we ask now that you will continue to pray Amen for Sister Deborah, Amen Wilson, and that of uh, Sister Veronica Wilkie, along with Sister Joyce White. The services for her beloved husband uh, will be Sunday evening on the 18th, Amen, at 5 o'clock p.m. at the Legacy Center on by Congo Funeral Home in Wilmington, Delaware. We ask that you uh, continue to just lift the family up as they prepare to lay our doorkeeper here at Pilgrim to rest. We thank you for your prayers and your covering. We thank you for your continued uh, giving. We thank you for your continued support to make this possible to continue to share a word with those around the world. We ask now that you come and you join us, if you will. Don't forget, amen, every first and third Sundays, our youth are on for their Sunday school beginning at 9.15 to 9.45, every first and third Sunday. So you got something coming up. God bless you, and let us come together as we study the Restoring Builder. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. We greet you once again with the joy of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the risen Christ. We welcome you to another study period with the Pilgrim Baptist Church family. Those of you who are visiting and those of you who just found us on the tube, we are grateful for you being with us this evening. We ask that you turn to the Old Testament book of Nehemiah the Old Testament book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, verses 11 through that of verse 20. Nehemiah, chapter 2, verse 11 through 20. And I will be reading uh, from the New King James translation. These words are penned for our matriculation this evening. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. And I rose in the night, I and some few men with me. Neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither were, was there any beast with me save the beast that I rode upon. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well and the dung port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Then I went on to the gate of the fountain and the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. Then went I up in the night by the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley and so returned. And the rulers knew not whether I went off what I did, neither had I, had I as yet told it to the Jews, nor to the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, 
nor to the rest that did the work. Then said I unto them, Ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's word that he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. But when Samballot, the Horonite, and Tobiah the servant, and, and the Ammonite, and Geshem the Arabian, heard it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, What is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? Then answered I them, and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore we his servants will arise and build. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial, in Jerusalem. These words are penned as we speak this evening concerning the restoring builder. The restoring builder. Coming out of Nehemiah chapter 2. Once again we follow up as Nehemiah was one who was in the Babylonian captivity and now he had come through that of uh, Nebuchadnezzar and that of King Cyrus and now we enter into another era under the leadership of King Artaxerxes who was the ruler of the Persians amen and who ruled from 465 BC until 425 BC here, this was approximately 40 years of his reign as king and ruler of Persia. Uh, we find here that Nehemiah, who had been a cupbearer, heard word from his brother Hanani that Jerusalem was lying in waste. He told him the condition that he had witnessed upon his return. You have to understand that under King Cyrus, amen, under the ministry of Ezra, there was about 50,000 of the Jews who were allowed to return home. And many of them came back and they uh, started to do some work on Jerusalem and on the wall. But now here comes Nehemiah who had requested of the king leave to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the wall. Nehemiah's countenance, a man was low, and King Artaxerxes realized that there was something wrong with Nehemiah, who was his cupbearer. Now, the cupbearer was the first one to drink before the king in case there was poison in whatever he was drinking. Nehemiah faithfully had served King Artaxerxes, and, and now the king, amen, heard the depressing news coming from that of Nehemiah and granted him leave. Now we find in this particular chapter, in chapter 2, amen, where all the exorcists understanding the cause of Nehemiah's sadness sends him with a letter and a, co and a commission to build again the wall of Jerusalem. So he not only sent letters for those things that Nehemiah would need, but he also sent letters and sent men with him that would aid him and protect him 
on his journey. Isn't it strange what God would do when he puts a mission in your heart? Nehemiah had wept. Nehemiah had prayed. Nehemiah had fasted. Amen. Before asking King or the exorcist. Amen. For this leave. And God granted him that leave. Coming through that of King or the exorcist. So now here in this 11th verse. We find that uh, Nehemiah now had come to Jerusalem and as he came to Jerusalem he was there three days nobody knew what God had put in his heart to do and brothers and sisters sometimes uh, it is a good thing when you ponder and when you pray over what God has asked you to do without sharing that information so that no one would be able to mess up the program. Nehemiah was confident in God. And now, amen, it says here he was there three days. And then uh, he arose. In verse number 12, it lets us know that he arose in the night. And I and some few men who was with him, amen, went around to survey the city of Jerusalem. Let me just break it down. He took time to go and see the damage that was done. And it was lying waste. It was great damage that was done to the wall and to the gates that secured the city of Jerusalem. Here in this particular verse, he says that that, that neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me, save the beast I rode up on. So he did not want to, amen, have anyone to recognize what he was doing. He was doing it under the cloak of darkness. So he wanted to see for himself. He wanted to survey for himself what needed to be done. Still not having said a word about what God had sent him to Jerusalem to do. Nehemiah pondered these things in his heart. Oh, he did not tell any of them. Amen until it was time see brothers and sisters sometimes we need to hold what God has shown us until it's time to go to work there are many times that the enemy has thrown wrenches into the gears amen and messed up some things that God had purposed to do so well preacher uh, how can you mess up what God uh, wants us to do if you a man expose something at the wrong time the devil can try to mess it up but Nehemiah was operating in the wisdom of almighty God oh I want us to look at what took place here in verse 13 he says and I went out by night by the gate of the valley even before the dragon well and the dung port and viewed the walls of Jerusalem which were broken down and the gates thereof was consumed with fire. Now he talks about the gate of the valley. And the gate of the valley was a gate that was on the southwestern side of the city of Jerusalem. He talks about the dung port and, uh, and now the dung port, amen, or, or excuse me, the dragon well, excuse me, let me go to the dragon well, amen, that was identified with that of the pool of Siloam. And we realize that in the New Testament, it was the pool of Siloam where the blind man went and washed his face and received his sight. And then the dung port. The dung port, amen, was uh, the gate where 
they uh, led out to the trash dump where they dumped all of their garbage and, and stuff. A amen. And here he, he points out as he directs us his travel as he was viewing the ruin and the breakdown of the wall of Jerusalem. He even talks about where the gates have been consumed with that of fire. Nehemiah wants to give us a vivid picture, an image of the destruction that had taken place. And out of all of this time, the city of, amen, Jerusalem was lying waste and open to anyone that wanted to come in or go out. So now he comes and he says in this 14th verse, he says, Then I went on to the gate of the fountain and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. He wanted us to understand that when he talks about the king's pool, he was really going back to that of what Hezekiah had built during that time. Amen. Coming out of 2 Kings 20 and 20, he talks about, amen, the project that Hezekiah had. Oh, I come to bear record that it took, it took, amen, Nehemiah, amen, a great deal of patience uh, to deal with what he was seeing because now his beloved city and many of his people that had come back had been hindered from the work, amen, because of those who would, amen, make fun of them and laugh concerning the rebuilding of the wall. But here comes Nehemiah. Nehemiah comes with confidence. Nehemiah comes with ambition. Nehemiah comes with the direction of God to rebuild the wall. Now, let's look and see. It was torn up in such a fashion that him riding his horse, he could not even get through some of the pathways that he needed to see. Therefore, he had to look from afar. Look at verse 15. Then went I up in the night by the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley, and so returned. So he made a round robin. He backtracked himself, amen, after viewing the wall for himself. When he talks about that, he's talking about the book of Kindred. Oh, amen, uh, coming from the Hebrew breakdown. Amen. And now he re-enters through the gate of the valley. Brothers and sisters, it was an horrific sight for Nehemiah to see. Nehemiah wept over what he seen in Jerusalem. And there, a man, after he viewed the city, after he had surveyed it for himself, he continued to pray and to look to the Lord. Verse 16 says, And the rulers knew not whether I went or what I did. He did it in secrecy. He did not want anyone to be alerted to what he was doing. So he went out in the secrecy of the night to do what he had to do. He didn't even tell the rulers. He didn't even tell the Jews. He did not have, have the priests uh, acknowledge on what he was doing. The nobles are the rulers, nor the rest that he, that did the work. So many who was already working did not realize what Nehemiah was getting ready to do because he did not tell any of them what God had put in his heart. It was heavy upon him that the city of Jerusalem would be secure once again. That it would be protected from, 
amen, the enemies from without as well as securing those that was within. Brothers and sisters, how secure are we today? Even though they went back to rebuild the wall, what walls do you have that would secure your dwelling? What walls would you have that would secure your home? God, amen, has granted us the Holy Spirit. He has given us, amen, divine protection for, from, uh, amen, many of our enemies. And yet and still, Nehemiah was marching on, not worrying about what others was going to say, not worrying about what others was going to do, but he was focused on what God had sent him to do. So we look at verse 17 now. As he was still pondering over the desolation of the city. Then said I unto them, ye see the distress that we are in. So in other words, he pointed out the travesty that had taken place. He pointed out how bad it was, how horrific it was for the city to lie waste as it was. Walls that were torn down in spots and gates that was wide open where anybody could travel in. Listen at the scene here. He says, amen, the, 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 the distress that they were in, how Jerusalem lies waste. And the gate thereof are burned with fire. So come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem that we be no more, amen, a reproach. So in other words, we don't need anyone looking at us with disdain. We don't need anyone laughing at us, amen, or putting us down. It's time for us to go to work. Brothers and sisters, there's times when you ponder over what God is going to do. But look at Nehemiah coming in. Amen. Following that of Ezra. And putting them to work. He came in. Amen. With the power of the word of God. And he beckoned them to get up now. And let's go to work. They did not ponder in their minds. How many folk they had. They did not sit there and quiver concerning, amen, the lack of people that was working. One of the things I like about this story is that everybody heard Nehemiah. Everybody was in agreement that the wall should be restored. That Jerusalem should have no breaches in it. Therefore, the Bible lets us know through that of Nehemiah. Look at what he says in verse 18. Then I told them of the hand of God, which was good upon me. And also the king's word that he had spoken unto me. So in other words, he did not mention all the exorcists at first, but he mentioned God. He mentioned he was under the direction of God. And then he said that all the exorcist has given me leave to come back and to rebuild and restore the wall. Oh, look at this, brothers and sisters, how cooperation came in because they were of one mind. They were wanting to do what was asked of them in securing the wall of Jerusalem, the city of God. They knew it was in their hands, amen, to start the work and to get it done. So here, amen, after hearing that, and they said, listen at the B portion of 18, and they said, let us rise up and build. Oh, brothers and sisters, look at the cooperation. Look at the unity that came together when they were in a oneness to do something for God. Why is it so hard 
for, amen, the body of Christ to come together to work on the things that God is promoting among us. Why is it so hard for us, amen, to put down the big eyes and the little U's and come together as one to work for the kingdom of God? Oh, here they said, let us rise and let us build. Oh, I like this. And then what on the other side of that, it says, so they strengthen their hands for this good work. They counted the work that they were getting ready to do good because it was for the Lord. It was to honor. It was to glorify. Amen. It was to magnify the sovereign God, the creator of heaven and earth. They realized, amen, that they had sinned a great sin, but now, amen, it was in their hands to do homage unto God. Oh, the work that they were going to do, they did not grumble, but they said together, let us rise and let us build. Oh, brothers and sisters, it's good when we can come together in unity. When we can, amen, lay aside our petty differences. When we can come into a spiritual oneness, amen, uh, to do the work of the Lord. The world won't understand what we are doing. When we do things, we don't do it for show. We don't do it for fashion. But we do it to give God glory. We do it to allow others to see what God can do. When we work as one. So verse 19 comes into play as we hasten on. But when Sanballat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, uh, amen, the servant, the Ammonite and Geshem, uh, the Arabian heard it. They laughed us to scorn. Now I want us to put a pause there. There's a comma. Because you're going to always have those in opposition. You're going to always have those uh, who don't see what God sees. They don't understand what God is able to do. Oh, but look at this now. They laugh them to scorn. Sometimes people will laugh at what you do. Sometimes people will wag their head because they don't understand what you do. But when we do it for God, when we stand on our faith, faith itself without works is dead. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. When we operate in faith, when we operate in true faith, God will show us things before they ever come to pass. You can envision what God is going to do. And here they laughed, but they paid them no mind. Listen at this now. They laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, what is this thing that you do? Aren't you crazy? You don't have enough to do this work. Oh, but I'm so glad that we serve a providential God. I'm so glad that we serve a God who will provide. Because later on, amen, I can answer this question because later on in the book of Nehemiah, you will find that when the handful, the remnant that was there started to work, amen, there were others who saw what was going on from afar. There were others who had heard that they were there building the wall. Nehemiah didn't have to worry about the hands that God was going to supply. Those who were not there, those who did not want to work. God had others, a man outside, who were looking to see what was being done. Oh, I'm so glad that he is a providential God. 
And even though they laughed, even though they didn't understand, even though they despised what they were doing, even though they showed contempt, even though they wagged their tongues, they kept on working. And brothers and sisters, this is what we have to do. Because the world don't understand what we are doing. The world don't look at souls. Look at us today. Look how a man uh, torn down we are in society today. Look how many times uh, we have been scorned. Look how many times that those who are telling the truth have been abused and, and have been even threatened. How many times have they been lied on amen, and backstabbed? How many times have we seen during the time of the virus, during the time of the election, during the time of all the death, during the time of the sorrow, during the time of the killing, during the time of the marching, that God is showing us it's time to turn back to him. When we come together as one, we make a statement. And here it says, will ye rebel against the king? Not knowing that the king had already granted him leave in order to do what he was doing. Verse number 20. Oh, as we hasten on, says these words. Then said I them and said unto them, the God of heaven will prosper us. Oh, I want you to look at the confidence that we ought to have when we're doing good work for the Lord. I don't care how they laugh. I don't care how they wag their heads. I don't care how many times they say you at church too much. I don't care how many times they say you praise him too much. You pray too much. Why are you giving to that church? What are they doing for you? It's what God is doing for you. And when we give out of the goodness of our hearts, when we are able to look to the hills from whence cometh our help, God will prosper our life. Look at what he says here. The God of heaven will prosper us. Oh, when we stand on the promises of God, when we stand on the word of God, when we stand on the ability of God, God will prosper us. God is leading us now into a time of the UK variant that is creeping and that has exploded in America. Another variant that has come forth. And brothers and sisters, God is sending warning and saying, be prepared, amen, to cover yourself. Just like, amen, Nehemiah is saying, we need to cover Jerusalem. We need to cover the city of David. We need to cover where God dwells. Amen. It's time for the body of Christ to cover itself. Here he says he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. I don't care what you say Nehemiah is saying. I don't care how you laugh and I don't care how much junk you talk. There is no one greater than the God that we serve. We serve an awesome God. This is what is being a man implemented here. And there is a separation. You may talk junk, but we know whose side we're on. Oh, we're going to arise and we will build. Oh, I like that. We will build. We his servants. But ye have, now look at the separation now. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. Oh, brothers and sisters, this right here lets us know that a man between Sanballat and Horonite, the Horonite, along with Tobiah, the servant, Ammonite, and Geshem, the Arabian. 
none of these would have their portion when Jerusalem would be restored. In other words, what had been given them, amen, as their portion of land in the new land was now forfeited because of what they were doing against the people of God. Their portion had been revoked. Oh, brothers and sisters, no portion, no right, no memorial. In other words, their names would not even be mentioned when time come in the restoration. Oh, brothers and sisters, I'm so glad that we serve an awesome God. I'm so glad that we are living in a time when God can still restore. What we are looking for in this country right now is restoration when we look to get back to a social norm is no more than a restoration but let me tell you something when God restores he restores it with something that wasn't in it before it went down oh brothers and sisters there are many who are going to be crying Lord Lord when this thing is over there are many who will remember what God has done oh I come to just bear record amen send ballad and those who despise from the ten amen from the northern side amen of Jerusalem coming out of second Kings 17 6 through 10 of 23 and Ezra 4 and 3 lets us know amen that their portions were wiped out what side are you on? As God is trying to rebuild, as God is bringing in new servants, many during the time of this pandemic has heard the word of God. Many have given their lives over. They may not have been in church, but they've been listening over the airways. And as they listen, they come to the reality that during this virus, nobody can keep them but the divine God. Amen. Our great creator. But aren't you glad now that we are under the covering of the blood of Christ? There are those who don't want to believe, but yet God is still allowing life to roll on a little while longer in these mortal bodies. Oh, I'm so glad that the restoring builder was Jesus the Christ. I'm so glad that coming from the Old Testament into the New, that he who was the restorer, he who brought us back together again with God. A man is still a man operating on the throne. Without him, we can do nothing. So if you have, your well-being, if you have your health and your strength, the restoring builder, even though this was a heading given to Nehemiah, it's also a heading to the restorative power of Jesus Christ. Let us not forget what he did on Calvary. Let us not forget the price that he paid. Let us not forget that they wagged their tongues at him, but yet he stayed on the cross. They lied on him, but yet they stayed on the cross. They tried to tempt him, but yet he stayed on the cross. He was the restoring Savior. He loved us enough that he, amen, redeemed us, amen, from an eternal hell. He gave us an opportunity to make a choice. Oh, I'm so glad that the restoring Savior didn't leave us behind. Oh, he's been so awesome. Out of all the turmoil, out of all the trouble, he has secured his church. And I'm glad, Pilgrim, that we are in the number. I'm glad that our names have been written in the Lamb Book of Life. I'm so glad to be a child of the King. Not only did he save us, not only did he redeem us, amen, he restored us. And restoration means to be put back in place. And I'm so glad we've been brought back, amen, that we can serve him in spirit and in truth. 
So let us continue to work. When others grumble, when others cuss, when others fuss, let us be united. Let us operate cooperatively as we strive to make a difference in this world. It takes all of us to do the work that God has called us to do. Just share a good word. Just share a man with somebody a kind deed. And let them know that for God I live and for God I'll die. I hope this word tonight has found a lodging place within each of your hearts. I hope, amen, that when we gather again, whether it's by YouTube or whether it's in person, that we will be ready, amen, to come together to do a good work for the kingdom of Almighty God. And as we always do, we dare not end without extending the invitation. There are many who are lost. There are many who feel that they are so bad that they cannot be saved. But let me tell you something. Jesus came for the sinner. And if that's you, if you are down and out, if you are at a low place, if you're in a dark place, I ask you tonight, just cry out unto the Lord. And if you want to be saved, if you want to come to the knowledge of Christ, walk away from your troubles. Repeat after me. Father, I ask you now to forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus, your son, died for me on Calvary's cross. I believe that he was buried. And I believe that on the third day he rose again, not having some power, but all power in his hand. Come into my life, forgive me, and restore me is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says that if you have repeated these words and believed in your heart that you are now saved, you are now saved, a repentant. You are now a child of God. I pray now for your covering. Father in heaven, we stretch our hands to thee. No other help we know. We ask now that you would cover all that have listened to this word tonight and especially for those who have embraced it, who believed it, and who've confessed unto you for salvation. I ask that you now would hedge them in with your power. Cover them now that they may be a witness and that they may come to the knowledge of who you are for themselves. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And brothers and sisters, just remember, Pastor Rector loves you and there is nothing you can do about it. Have a blessed evening.